Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and you know what? Sometimes it's just fun to play cooperative games together. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of great single player games out there and we talk about those a lot on the channel and there's even a lot of great competitive multiplayer games. But sometimes it's just fun to sit down and play games together with your friends or family or whomever and just enjoy the time together. So that's why today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the 15 best cooperative games available on the Xbox platform. And yes, regardless if you own the Xbox series or the Xbox one, all of these games will be available for both. You just got to love the Xbox forward and backwards compatibility. But yeah, let's just go ahead and take a look at the 15 best cooperative games. In my opinion, do keep in mind that this is all just my opinion and yours may be completely different. With that in mind, if I do miss any of your favorite games, let me know in the comments below. But with that said, let's just jump right into the list. And to start this list off, I have an often overlooked first party Xbox game, especially when it comes to cooperative experiences, and that is Kalimba. Now, Kalimba is this really interesting puzzle platformer where you take these different colored totem poles and you have to complete various puzzles and it, it's fun by yourself, but it really is insanely fun when you play cooperatively with a friend. You're going to have to learn to work as a team to solve the various puzzles and it can get pretty complex the later you get into the game, but it's always so fun and rewarding. Not only are you going to have to learn to master the different mechanics of platforming, but you're also going to have to really use your mind to solve the various puzzles and they're just always throwing new challenges your way. Like I said before, Kalimba is often a very overlooked game, but it absolutely shouldn't be, especially if you're looking for a good cooperative experience. You're really not gonna find a much better cooperative platformer than Kalimba. Next up, I have Journey to the Savage Planet, which is this humorous first person exploration adventure game. And it kind of plays out similar to something like a 3D Metroidvania. You embark in this mysterious world and there's just always something new to discover thanks to its progression system and all these different abilities that you can unlock. And something that really stands out about this game in particular is that it's genuinely a very funny game. I don't really think a lot of games pull off humor well, but I genuinely do find Journey to the Savage Planet to be very clever and funny. And because you can play this game completely cooperative, it just really adds to the overall experience. So with this game, you're going to have a fun, fascinating world to explore. It's got good platforming, lots of abilities to unlock, and just overall, it's a very fun game. Now, when you start to think about good cooperative experiences, sometimes turn-based RPGs tends to be a little bit overlooked, but there's actually a few really good turn-based RPGs that are just fantastic when it comes to cooperative gameplay. And that includes both Wasteland 3 and then Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, both of these games on their own are just flat out amazing and some of the best RPGs that's released in modern times. Like they are absolutely fantastic, but you can actually bring a partner into each one of these worlds and then experience the entirety of the game together. I mean, really both Wasteland 3 and Divinity Original Sin 2 are just these massive games when it comes to their stories, their characters, their worlds, and, and you the player actually has an impact on the world and characters in these games, and then you can just experience all of this together. Yeah, it feels great and it's just a joy to play together. If you like RPGs even the slightest, definitely check these games out and, and while you're at it, go grab a friend. As soon as Cuphead launched back in 2017, it really became an instant classic. Now, the first thing you probably notice about this game is its art style that kind of resembles old cartoons like Mickey Mouse. It really stands out and you don't really see games made this way or really cartoons for that matter anymore, but it is a striking art style and it's just so fitting in the world in this game itself. But beyond its art style, it's also a very challenging and fun game as well. It's a mix of platforming and shoot 'em up sections with just these absolutely brilliant boss encounters. Honestly, really, it's some of the best boss encounters I've seen in games in quite some time. But another really cool aspect about this game is actually its cooperative gameplay. One person can play as Cuphead while the other can play as Mugman. And well, if both of you are up for a challenge, this game almost feels like an old school arcade game where you can just get together and play and just see how far you can make it in a day's time. 
really, if there's any genre that just feels perfect when it comes to cooperative gameplay, it's beat em up games. And really the good news is that there's actually quite a few just top tier beat em up games out in the market right now. And I'll kind of get into some of these other ones later, but if I just had to choose one, I'd have to go with Streets of Rage 4. Streets of Rage 4 is just the whole package when it comes to beat em up games. It's got this beautiful art style to it. The gameplay is challenging and accessible at the same time. You have a number of characters all with their own unique abilities and plenty of combos to learn, good level design and great boss encounters. And like I said, it's just the whole package. Now with that said, even though Streets of Rage 4, yes, would be my go-to beat em up game, there's actually plenty of other games like this on the market that's really good, including River City Girls, Castle Crashers, which are both just absolutely excellent, and then Battletoads, though unfortunately that's only a couch co-op game. Regardless, there's lots of great beat em up games in the market, which are all fun to play cooperatively. Rocket League has always been a game that's been very interesting to me, and the reason I say that is because when I first saw this game, I had no idea why people were so excited about it. I, I thought it looked just kind of strange, and then I played it myself, and I was just blown away by how insanely fun and accessible this game is. It really is just a fun experience that almost anybody can pick up and play, though it has an incredibly high ceiling if you want to get good at the game. Now technically Rocket League is more of a competitive game, but you can actually bring a friend along with you and play local split screen together and you can play up against AI opponents or against real people in real life. The thing about this game though is because it's just so good, I just had to include it on this list. If for whatever reason you haven't played Rocket League already, definitely do so. It's really no secret that in recent years, Monster Hunter has risen to just incredible heights of popularity thanks to Monster Hunter World. This is a game that just took the gaming world over and for good reason. Monster Hunter World is a very good RPG for multiple reasons. First off, the combat is excellent when it comes to this game. You have all of these different weapons that have their own unique move sets, and then you can upgrade each individual weapon as well as different armor, and there's just always this sense of progression when it comes to Monster Hunter World. But the thing that really stands out to me in specific is the world itself. It actually feels like a real breathed in ecosystem thanks to the monsters and how they interact with you, the environment, as well as with different monsters. The first time I saw a monster literally eat another monster in this game, I was just blown away by that. And the really cool thing is that Monster Hunter World does allow for four player online cooperative gameplay. That way you can strategically take down all these massive monsters together. Now, so far, we've had a lot of games that has great cooperative gameplay included, but what about a game that was built from the ground up with cooperative gameplay in mind? And that is exactly what A Way Out is. And in fact, A Way Out is a mandatory cooperative game. Now, that can be a bit of a double-edged sword, but the good news here is that you do get a free friend pass that you can just invite anybody online to play with you without them actually owning the game. So you don't actually have to buy two copies of A Way Out to play it online. So they handled that aspect very well and for that matter, this game is masterful when it comes to co-op gameplay. Yes, it is a very cinematic experience and both players will take on a completely different character, but you're always playing in split screen so you can see what each other does at any given time. And overall, it does have a pretty good story about a prison break scenario. And then when it comes to the gameplay, it's just filled with a ton of different mini games that either has you working together with your partner or at times you'll even work against each other for just a little bit of fun. What I will say about this game though is it's unique in terms of cooperative games and I think Hazelight pulled it off incredibly well. Now here I have a couple of dungeon crawlers that are just insanely fun to play together and that is Minecraft Dungeons and then Diablo 3. Now in both these games, you can build characters the way you want to, to strategically take out hordes and hordes of enemies. And when you have a partner, you can kind of strategically do this together and try to adjust to the strategy and how the other person creates their characters. Yeah, you're gonna have to take on waves and waves of enemies, but you're gonna have to be smart about it if you intend on surviving. This means you're gonna have to work together, find better loot, and then strategically build your characters together to get through a dungeon. 
Now, I will say that I think both Diablo 3 as well as Minecraft Dungeons are very fun, though the main difference between the two really comes down to complexity. Diablo 3 does have a little bit more depth to it, while Minecraft is a little bit more accessible to jump in for newcomers to the genre. But either way, again, both of these are very fun games. And here I have probably the game that me and my family has had the most fun together with, and that is Overcooked 2. This game is just absolute pure chaos. The whole goal of the game is to run a restaurant style kitchen and then prepare food for customers and what they ordered. And it all sounds very simple on the surface, but they just absolutely ran with it. Thanks to it's just crazy over the top, brilliant designs of each kitchen. I mean, seriously, Overcooked 2 legitimately has some of the best level design I've seen in video games, period. It almost feels like a first party Nintendo game in some ways. But the thing that I think that they did so well with this particular game is that there's just always something new. There's some kind of new recipe or there's a new obstacle or a new setting and it's just always something new to do. And it's also one of those games that almost anybody can just pick up and play and have fun with. There's really only a short list of games that can do that and Overcooked absolutely is one of those games. Now, if you do like Overcooked, another game that you can check out that plays kind of similar to it would be Moving Out. But instead of you running your own kitchen, you instead would be running your own moving company, which is similar, but quite a bit different at the same time. Also a very fun cooperative experience. There's a very short list of games that I've enjoyed as much as Portal 2. Portal 2 is very debatably the best puzzle game ever made. It's got a brilliant story with amazing humorous writing, and it's just so extremely unique. Most of the time when you play a game, you can kind of compare it to something else within the same genre. You might play a platformer and then compare it to something like Mario, or you might play a Metroidvania and compare it to something like Ori and the Blind Forest or Hollow Knight. But in the case of Portal, nothing else feels quite like Portal. It really is its own thing, and that alone is very special. And even though this game released way back in 2011, it still is absolutely amazing. It's quite simply put, a masterpiece. And while the story is excellent alone, interestingly enough, they also made a completely separate game mode catered to cooperative gameplay. And you know what? It feels just as good. Now you have to work together to solve all of these portal related puzzles. And it's just going to constantly ask you to shift how you think as you figure out how to solve the various puzzles together. Honestly, I would consider Portal 2 to be a must play game. Whether you play it in single player or cooperative, both modes are just superb. And next up here, I actually have yet another really unique game being Sea of Thieves. Now, when Sea of Thieves first launched, it was met with a lot of criticism for its lack of content. But don't let that fool you because this turned out to be a really good game in the long run as Rare just added a ton of content since its original release. Even here recently, they did add a Pirates of the Caribbean expansion, which is quite good. But the thing about this game in particular is that it's always best when played together. You do travel the world as pirates and there's a bunch of things that you can do, whether you want to go blow up other ships, you want to go hunt for treasure, you want to go on a raid or whatever. There's just a ton of things that you can do in Sea of Thieves. But when it comes to actually controlling your ship, it's best to have a crew. Each person in the crew can kind of do their own thing on the ship. One person can steer, another person can man the cannons, another person can control the cells, and you kind of get where I'm going with this. You're going to need to coordinate on these ships to get the most out of them, though you can choose different size of ships. You can do a two-person, three-person, or th four-person crew, which all has different size ships. So you do kind of keep that in mind, but Sea of Thieves is just such a unique experience and it's always a blast to play with friends. I can honestly say that there's not many games that I've played that I have just laughed as hysterically as I have when it comes to Sea of Thieves. It almost feels like there's just a new adventure every single time you play. And here I have Gears 5, though honestly I would recommend the whole Gears franchise. And the thing about Gears is that really this is one of the few games in the market right now that is the complete package. And what I mean by that is that it has an enjoyable single player, the competitive multiplayer is excellent, and then on top of that, 
It also has a great cooperative experience. Not only can you play the campaign completely cooperative with your friend, but you also have horde mode where you fight off wave after wave of enemies. And the thing about Gears in specific, and this is the thing that has always really stood out to me when it comes to this franchise, is again, it is a completely unique experience. There's nothing else on the market that feels like Gears. And if you've played these games competitively, you know that there's just nothing as mechanically as good as Gears of War. When it comes to third person shooters, and I will say this over and over again, I believe Gears is the absolute best because of how its mechanics works. So if you want to play a good cooperative game with a fun campaign or you want to play horde mode and you also want to just have strong, ridiculously good shooting mechanics, then Gears of War is definitely the way to go. Now, if you are looking for a good cooperative third person shooter that's kind of similar to Gears of War and maybe a mix of Destiny as well, I would recommend Outriders as well. And next up, I have Halo, which is a very special franchise for Xbox. And much like Gears of War, Halo also is the complete package. This is something that I don't really think Xbox gets enough credit for. But again, we are seeing this with Halo. Halo has a good single player campaign with a ton of lore. It's got this super addictive, amazing competitive multiplayer. It's got things like Forge. And then on top of that, yes, this franchise feels fantastic to play cooperatively. And in a lot of ways, I would say it's actually the preferred way to play through Halo's campaign. See, the thing about Halo in particular was that this franchise grew up with Xbox Live. So in a lot of ways, Halo was built around the idea of multiplayer. And while, yes, it has this amazing competitive multiplayer, I can also say that some of my most memorable experiences playing through Halo was done cooperatively. I mean, Halo's campaign just feels perfect to play with friends. You take a look at something like the Warthog as an example. The Warthog is meant for multiple players to use. You have one person driving. You have a person in the passenger seat just kind of using their primary weapon or lobbing grenades at anything that they can. And then you have a person in the back shooting the turret, and it just feels perfect to use together. And then the maps are big enough that each person can do their own thing, but still coordinate to do things together. So really, Halo feels perfect to play together, whether you play its campaign or maybe you just want to create a multiplayer level together by using Forge. But you can do that as well. So, so yeah, Halo is absolutely one of the best cooperative games that you can play right now on Xbox. Now, a few other very notable cooperative first-person shooters that you should check out would also be Destiny as well as the Borderlands franchise. Both of these are excellent first-person shooters to play as well cooperatively. And at the number one spot, I have a game that just absolutely blew me away, and that is It Takes Two. Now, this is coming from the same creators that did A Way Out, Hazelight. And that does mean that this is yet another mandatory cooperative game, but honestly, I wouldn't have this game any other way. Without a doubt, It Takes Two is a masterpiece for sure. And the thing about this game is that it is just so insanely creative. I'm really not sure if I've ever played a game that's quite as creative as It Takes Two, and just every single level is completely different and offers something new. In one level, you might have this asynchronous gameplay where one person has a hammer and another person has a nail, and you have to use those together with their own unique abilities to solve various puzzles. And then in another level, you might have to run away from a literal army of squirrels shooting at you with guns. So yeah, there's just always something new and creative in this game that makes your mind work in different ways. You're going to have to solve various unique puzzles. There's going to be plenty of platforming sections and just this brilliant level design that's just coated with creativity from top to bottom. It Takes Two is a brilliant experience and truthfully one of the best games that I've played not just of this year, but probably ever. That's how good It Takes Two really is. Anyways, though, that is it for this list, but if I did miss any of your favorite cooperative experiences, please let me know in the comments below. That will not only help others discover those games, but it will help me find those as well. So make sure to let me know in the comments below on what your favorite cooperative experiences are. With that said though, if you did like the video, don't forget the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.